July 16, 1918. The last living Tsar of Russia and his family sleep soundly, unaware that the bloody civil war sweeping the country will soon overtake them. For 78 days, the family has lived in a drab compound in the remote city of Yekaterinburg, near the Siberian border, prisoners of communist revolutionaries fighting to control Russia. Just past midnight, with troops loyal to the Tsar fast approaching the city, the guards wake the royal family, telling them that they are being moved to a safe location. But the guards have no intention of protecting the family, and this night will soon become the brutal closing chapter of three centuries of Romanov rule. At the height of his reign, Tsar Nicholas had been the richest, most powerful man in the world, controlling one-tenth of the Earth's surface and a fortune worth $30 billion. Until the revolution, the Tsar was considered the anointed of God. He controlled the government. He was the supreme head of the Orthodox Church. He was worshipped as a demigod by most of his subjects and his word was considered law in every aspect of life. Every decision was his. Even the most simple name change had to go across his desk. With his marriage to Alexandra, a German princess and granddaughter of Queen Victoria, the Tsar had expanded his sphere of influence to include the courts of Europe. In St. Petersburg, the Tsar and his family lived in a breathtaking palace with a thousand rooms. Hundreds of servants attended their every whim, and it seemed like a fairy tale existence. I think the picture that most people had of the Romanovs was of a very privileged family, but a family with which they could identify. Nicholas was extremely clever in the way he used his family. He had four gorgeous daughters, he had a beautiful son, they were very photogenic. I think he used them to sort of boost the very early on celebrity of the ruling family. But the Romanovs harbored dark secrets behind these carefully orchestrated images. Once omnipotent, their far-reaching powers were inexorably slipping from their grasp. Inside the palace, the long-awaited heir to the throne was diagnosed with hemophilia. The slightest of injuries could bring on premature death for Alexei and a crisis of succession for the royal family. Guards protected the young Tsarevich day and night and kept his condition secret from the Russian people. Alexandra was desperate to help her son, so she turned to a mystic healer named Grigory Rasputin. Despite his questionable reputation, Rasputin quickly became one of the Tsarina's closest advisors, fueling the Russian people's growing mistrust of the German-born Tsarina.